Love talking about history and we especially love talking about Iowa history and we get so excited when the Iowa History Journal comes out. This was in our mailbox this week so we know we had to talk to Michael Swanger. He is the publisher. Happy New Year Michael. Good to see you. Happy New Year, Lou. Congratulations to you and the crew on the new show. Love it. Yeah, this is a great time here. It is Iowa Live on Local 5 at 1145. Easy to remember, but also easy to remember. There are some pretty darn cool things inside of the latest issue of the Iowa History Journal, which you can get at a bunch of different locations. We'll talk about that in a second. But tell us what's inside this issue. Well, you bet. Let's start with the cover. Who, who we're looking at, Lou, is on the cover is a, a photo of James B. Morris Sr., who was one of the more influential and well-known journalists in Des Moines in the 20th century. Um, and to kind of summarize our cover story about uh, Mr. Morris, he was born in Atlanta and he moved to Des Moines after he graduated from Howard University and got his law degree and moved here in 1917, passed the bar, and then promptly uh, enlisted with the U.S. Army and joined the uh, Black Officers Training Program at Fort Des Moines, served overseas, was wounded in the final battle of World War I in Metz, France, came home, was one of only five practicing African-American lawyers in Iowa in the early 1920s, dabbled in politics briefly. And then a few years later, he bought the Iowa Bystander, which was founded in the late 1800s as the Iowa State Bystander, one of the oldest African-American newspapers west of the Mississippi River. And he became the third owner, and he became the face of that newspaper for nearly half a century. Uh, he owned it, the paper for 49 years. And folks who uh, have been in town for a long time will remember the bystander and, and the, the legacy that he left with that newspaper. Um, he was also uh, very active in uh, civil rights. He and his wife, Georgine, were uh, heads of the NAACP. And uh, just an amazing legacy, amazing career. Yeah, great and story. On our radar. Yeah, great story. Very riveting story here. Also, uh, it looks like you have something in here about a, a band leader uh, that you had a little something to do about. Tell us about that. Absolutely. I wanted to pay tribute to Bob Weiss, who sadly we lost um, in November of 2020. But uh, he was a longtime contributor to IHJ. But more importantly, he was he was a longtime jazz trumpeter, big band leader in town for decades. And I think perhaps his greatest uh, achievement and legacy was that he founded the Drake University Jazz Program in 1969. So all the students that he taught, many of them are still in town, are local players, local legends. And I wanted to pay tribute to Bob. He was a wonderful human being, and I'm, I'm going to miss him greatly. Yeah, it looks like we have a couple of science stories in here, too, including one about the sea lily that our buddy uh, John Busby put together. Absolutely. Our mutual friend, John, you know, uh, we're one of those states, Lou, that doesn't have an official fossil. And uh, John, uh, John dug up uh, the perfect candidate that's been waiting for uh, about 500 million years to be recognized, perhaps, as our official fossil. And that's the crinoid. And, you know, John dabbles in so many things, as you know. What I didn't know is that he was a rock star, too. There you go. Uh, he's been collecting rocks since he was a kid uh, <laughs> and dabbling in geology. And the crinoid, he does a good job of just spanning the, the history of the crinoid in Iowa, and uh, people who collected it and its importance. And then he, he really makes a case for it to be our official state fossil. We rarely do something like that, but it's written in a guest column format. And I'm hoping that the powers in, that be and the legislators see it because I think it's, it's worthy of consideration. That is so cool. Also talk about the uh, 1918 Spanish flu article about that. But where can people get a copy of this? Because I heard rumors you can also get it at a grocery store now. You can. You can get it at Hy-Vee, of course, and Fairway. Uh, in town, Beaverdale Books, and uh, we always encourage you to go to iowahistoryjournal.com to pick it up there as well. You can get the current issue or subscribe or get all of our collectible back issues there as well. Perfect. Michael Swanger, thank you so much. Great job again with the Iowa History Journal. We'll talk to you next time another issue comes out, buddy. Take care. Always right. a pleasure. Thank you, Lou. All right.